What's up, what's up, what's up, Foul Life audience, the podcast. We're back at you with another episode of the Essentials of Duck Hunting. We're excited today. Today's episode of the Foul Life podcast is brought to you by our friends in the great state of Georgia, friends, family, the outdoors, what Mr. Bill Jordan, his entire team, his entire family since 1986 have brought us the best camouflage patterns known to man. You talk about being able to disappear from turkeys and elk and deer, whitetail, mule deer, blacktail deer, coos deer, ducks, geese. Realtree has revolutionized the way we hide from game, getting them close for those ethical harvestable shots, ready to get on that Traeger and fill our bellies. Never been a more important time for that than this quarantine that's going on right now. We are hunters and we're able to feed our families and it feels so good. My guest today is Tyler Jordan, the son of Bill Jordan. You've seen him on Spring Thunder, on Realtree Spring Thunder on Instagram. You see him on Realtree Road Trips. You see him on Realtree Monster Bucks. You see him on everything Realtree, the commercial since he was a kid. Tyler Jordan, welcome back, buddy. What's up, Chad? How's everything going? Buddy, I just uh, was laying low, following our leadership and just social distancing, but I eating a lot of wild game, really focusing on my, my recipes, really trying to think outside the box and be a better provider. And I think, you know, it's one thing I'm going to take out of this is that my daughter is out of school and she's nine and she's obsessed with eating wild game. But now I get to yeah. do home ec with her and teach her how to cook it and prepare it. So it's been a cool deal. What about you? No. No, kind of the same thing here. You know, I've, I've, I've been going hunting just about every day. If it wasn't for turkey hunting right now, I think I'd probably be pretty depressed. You know, just having that, having that outdoors is still a good thing. And, um, you know, at least we have that to kind of hang on to. And then my little brother and sister, obviously, with everything going on, they're out of school. Uh, both of them are pretty big hunters. So I'm taking my sister just about every afternoon, trying to get her a turkey this year. Uh, she hasn't shot one in two years, so we're still working on it. But we've had a pretty good spring, you know, with Spring Thunder on Realtree 365. We've had a pretty good spring. Me and Philip both, you know, really can't complain. We've, um, you know, the first couple of weeks started off pretty hot. It's kind of slowed down here in the last 10 days, but we're still going at it pretty hard. You know, I, I think kind of late in the year, these birds are kind of getting in a weird mood, but, um, you know, we, we've hunted just about every single day since there's really nothing else to do. And then kind of like you said, just been cooking a lot of wild game. You know, this time of year, you know, with everything going on, especially too, you're thankful to be a hunter and an outdoorsman because I've had a lot of my friends who were at school that I went to school with at Ole Miss that have never been hunters. And some of them have asked me, how do I get into turkey hunting? How do I get into hunting, period? How do I, I they want to buy a bow, want to get into hunting? So I'm like, that's, if, if anything positive comes away out of this whole deal, hopefully that's something that, you know, we can all kind of, you know, people want to be more self-sufficient. And I think that's a good way to do it is to try to try to learn. And, um, you know, some, one of my buddies found a, a public land place to go turkey hunting. He's never been before in Mississippi. So he's going. So like, I, that makes me feel good. You know, obviously everything else going on is awful. And, uh, but when you hear that, um, you know, it kind of, kind of lifts you a little bit. I, I agree a hundred percent. I was talking to some guys at SCI today about a conversation I had on a, on a FaceTime video last night, preparing black tail deer steaks and helping a neighbor do it. Cause I gave them to him frozen. They thought them out and then they wanted a tutorial on what the membrane and cutting the fat off and, and getting them ready with the dry rub and everything. And I just, I, I didn't think anything of it. It just became so second nature of me because we do it so much in what you and I do with content and how to's. And we almost take it for granted sometimes that we get to prepare wild game and that we were brought up in a, in a mentored tile style family to where we were hunting at an early age. And after he eats the black tail deer, you know, what he, he says to me, I want to get into hunting. And I'm like, wow, I, I didn't even do it for that. I just did it because I had some extra meat and I don't want you to have to worry about, you know, not because our, our store closest to where we live in this part of Nevada, is out of all meat still it's weird it's weird that this far into this quarantine that people are still overindulging on that but it is what it is i can tell you honestly that since the shutdown tyler i have not bought one piece of meat i have trans, being transparent i bought some vegetables i've bought some box cereal for my daughter i have not bought one 
bit of meat, nothing, lunch meat, nothing. I mean, I'm slicing turkey breast, wild turkey breast for turkey meat. I'm, I'm using deer summer sausage for sandwiches for my dog. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing what the feeling and the jubilation it gives you in the heart of a hunter, instead of being raw, raw, told you all would be leaning on us someday. You know, I'm more of like what you're saying, like, let's get more people into this lifestyle. Let's get more people excited about it. Right. Well, I think it kind of, you know, uh, not that we, we needed validation. We all know why we do it, you know, but you know, for, for the guy like at our Publix, I was there tonight. It's kind of like you said, there's still, you can't find any meat in the, in the section right now, which is amazing. So I think when, when people go in there and they realize that they can't get anything, they're like, okay, how do I, if I just had to rely on myself to go out there and do this, how would I go and do it? That's, I think that's why some of my friends who have never hunted before are asking me, how do I get into it? You know, I have a, a full, uh, 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 freezer full of wild game, turkey, you know, a uh, bunch of venison. So we, we've been using that the last month and that's pretty much all we've done. And, uh, you know, it, it makes you thankful to be a hunter and that you have a, a freezer full of, you know, wild game for this time. And, you know, it's, it's like one of my friends asked me last week, you know, is there any way you could spare me some turkey breast? I'm like, heck yeah, man, you know, w- would love to. And then, uh, then asking me, how do I get into turkey hunting? Is there anywhere public land to go here around Georgia? As, as, so that's 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 a good thing. I, I hope that uh, you know a lot of people. You know, hopefully nothing like this ever happens again. But you know that that hunters are are here for you, and that's I think that's why everybody should at least you know be knowledgeable on uh, how to do it yourself if you were forced to do that. I couldn't agree with you more, Tyler Jordan. And I will take it a step further in saying that if you are going to get into a role that you're talking about here of you know, being one of the faces of Realtree, growing up in a family, having the credibility to where people are going to ask you to teach them how to cook wild game. They're going to ask you, can I borrow wild game? They're going to teach you, can you help me get into hunting? And then after that, they're going to ask you, can you show me the ropes? Yeah. I'm probably going to say some things right now that might, you might not dis, you might agree with, or you might disagree with. It might, and it might tell people that hear this, that, Hey, you know, you know, there's every, everybody has the right to hunt in their own way. And I totally agree with that. If you're ethical and legal and you're, and you're having fun, then do it. But I feel in my heart of hearts that there's only one way to kill ducks and there's only one way to harvest geese. There's only one way to harvest turkeys. Now, again, I'm going to say some things that are going to irritate some people, I think, and I'm not trying to tell them that you think the same thing, but I don't believe in shooting a coyote at a thousand yards with a, with a high powered rifle when the vitals are this big and the windage and the ballistics of the bullet and everything that goes into that, the drop point and all that. I believe in getting them at five feet and shotgunning them dead and ethically dead 80 yards with the 22 to 50 with great, I believe in ducks at 20 yards over the decoys back flap. And I believe that a turkey is in your decoy strutting at anywhere from 45 closer. Now there are guns, there are TSS, there are loads that'll let you kill them at 70 and 80 and that's fine, but I want to trick them. I'm also very against bow hunting for turkeys, Tyler. And I've, I've been telling some people that and they're like, no dude. I'm like, that's one animal that's supposed to be shot with a gun. Now that's not what I'm trying to get you to talk on. What I'm trying to go down this road, Tyler Jordan, is that I feel that the revolution, the real tree revolution of being able to help hunters get animals close and get into their areas of where they are comfortable and being able to shoot a bull elk at eight feet or 18 yards instead of five, 500 yards, which is fine too, with the right rifle and you're a good shot. I'm not saying that you don't hunt. I'm just saying that when I'm teaching somebody, I get no validation out of seeing a goose fall out of the air at 80 yards. I want that goose tricked. His eyeballs are tricked. His senses are tricked. He, you sound like geese. You look like geese. And there's no predators in sight. There's no boogeyman in sight because the real tree's doing its job. Now, that might be pretentious to say you know, with our platform of being able to say that, but that's just my opinion. I don't even know if you have that opinion being part so integrated into Realtree, but I feel that you owe it to the animal to get them as close as possible and dispatch them ethically as possible. Yeah. Don't tell my dad he can't bow hunt turkeys (laughs) (laughs) because that's all he's been doing the entire deer season. My dad, I think he's, you know, come to a point where he doesn't, uh, you know, he's bow hunted or he shot plenty of turkeys with a shotgun. So it's just like he wants to challenge himself. And I'll say he's been very successful. That's pretty much all he's done the last three years. He has not taken a turkey with a shotgun in three years. Okay. So now with that being, if that being said, in your opinion, 
Yeah. Isn't there something about killing them with a shotgun though that's way different than a bow? Like it's just that it's over and they're done. Is it? Am I? Am I wrong? Because you turkey hunt way more uh, than I do. No, turkeys are supposed to be shot with a shotgun. That's that's what I tell my dad, dude. When yeah. I I said that I I literally was like a little timid mouse in the Waddell deal, and I we were in Nashville, <laughs> and I'm sitting there, and I said the same thing because I'm not going to be fake about. It. I'm saying Waddell, yeah, I've killed forty turkeys in my life. You've probably seen. 4,000 of them hit the ground with all the hunts you've done in your life with your family and growing up in the, in the Turkey woods. We don't have turkeys where I grew up, Tyler. We had to trade the state of Texas, uh, wild sheep for turkeys and then they transplanted the turkeys from texas into nevada the rios and then and then the coyotes ate like the first 40 they they planted because th- the turkeys had no idea what to do when they saw when <laughs> because they weren't on private property but anyway yeah. i said that to waddell i'm like i wonder what he's going to say he goes trust me i agree they, they they're supposed to be shot with a shotgun and you i don't said ever you don't ever see michael try to shoot one with a bow I, I, I said this to Chad Mendez the other day who could literally wrap me up in under a minute, like just destroy <laughs> me in a fight. And he sent me this picture of this bow kill. I go, dude, knock it off. And then this protege of Chad Mendez, this highway patrolman in California, who's a great guy, a dear friend of mine, an awesome cook. His name's, uh, his name's Mark. And he did the same thing. I said, what are you doing? Why? And they literally, man, they, you know, I'm just playing a little bit of the devil's advocate and I'm instigating and I'm biting at him a little bit. Dude, they're like, no, 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 no. I'm like, man, I'm just telling you, they're supposed to be shot with a shotgun, dude. No, they are. I, I'm 100% on board with that. And, you know, back to the ethical part, too. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm the, I'm the exact same way. I mean, unless, like, the only, the furthest shots I've ever taken with the bow, which I feel like are, are still very far, but I practiced over and over and over again because in Canada, I shot two mule deer. At, uh, they were, one was at 72, the other one was at 74 yards. And that is a long shot for anybody with a bow. And even, you know, when we aired the footage, people were still like, can't believe you took that shot. But I made a really good shot on him. But that was because I practiced so much every single day leading up to that hunt for two months straight. I shot every day with my bow. Wake up in the morning, I would shoot sitting down. Um, And, you know, I I feel like if, if I didn't, if I didn't prepare that way, there's no way I'd feel good about going out there and just winging it at 70 yards. There's no way I'd go with that out there and do that. So, you know, having said that, it definitely is a long shot, but I think for the, for the guys, the archers that, you know, that, that do take, take that shot, the ones that I've seen that I'm friends with, they practice so much, way more than I even do, you know, for white tails, a little bit different. I totally agree. I mean, that, you know, most of my shots are, you know, 40 and in, you know, sometimes I've made a couple of white tail shots that are, you know, past 50, but that's very rare, you know, but for the mule deer, when you're out there in Canada, the spot and stalk, um, you, you kinda, you kinda have to go that route. Um, you know, just because it's, it's tough to get close on those, those things, especially when there's no wind, there's no cover to hide behind. You're literally crawling through pea fields and, uh, canola and, you know, trying to get as close as you can. But, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm with you hundred percent though, when it comes to shooting a duck, I'd rather, I get way more fulfillment just knowing that, my odds are going to be really good when he's in there at 20 yards and, and in, uh, versus way out there, you know, 50 and 50 or further. So, yeah, I just, I'm, I, I'm with I you. and I don't want to get on a soapbox and I'm so glad to hear that you do think that Turkey should be with the gun, but again, hunting is hunting. And, and when I talk to somebody like shocky or, you know, you, it really is. If, if you're going to go do it ethically, we want people to have fun. I just don't want to see an animal suffer and I don't want to cripple an animal. That's all I'm trying to say. So when it, when it attains to, the essentials of duck hunting and you self admit that you, yeah. you, that is probably the least amount of hunting that you've done compared to whitetail and Turkey. Is that fair to say? Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. I've never really been a big duck hunter, but that's because, you know, here obviously in Georgia growing up it, we don't have a lot of good places to go duck hunt. You know, my dad never, we never woke up and went duck hunting. It was always Turkey or deer. So it really wasn't until I got to college that I really got into duck hunting. Cause I went to the university of Mississippi out there at Ole Miss. I had a lot of friends, usually, you know, duck hunting out there in Mississippi, it's a religion. You know, if that's all you do is really duck hunt. People think you're crazy if you don't duck hunt. Um, so yeah, I, I really didn't get into it, but I, you know, I, but camouflage for ducks is obviously the most important. I feel like out of any animal, you know, it's gotta, it's gotta work there versus just about anything else I've ever done. Yeah. And I think that, I think that turkeys have great eyesight and I think that movement is more, I think that you could probably be in a black suit and kill turkeys if you're a proficient caller and you stay still. But 
I think that camouflage and looking like the tree that you're sitting up against because the photography and the cameras today, you can literally take a picture. And I don't know if you saw the picture that Tom Rashashin posted. Do you follow our photographer, Tom Rashashin at all? He, I um, think I do follow Tom. He posted a picture yesterday of my brother and you can see this picture here. I'm holding it up to the camera. Can you see it? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Like I, I looked at it and I'm like, what's Tom doing taking pictures? And I'm like, whoa, I thought it was just trees. And then I'm like, my brother's carrying a rifle in real tree camo. And I'm like, that's the power of camouflage, right? Like that's almost dangerous. Like that would like you have a squirrel run up you. You might have a, a deer come and try to rub your skin off thinking you're a tree, right? Which is what real tree meant in the origins of your dad naming the company, which you said on your first appearance on the podcast. But I think that yeah, turkeys are looking at you, but there's sometimes just one, sometimes two or three elk. Sometimes it's just one bull coming. They got amazing eyesight. You got to stay still, control your breathing. Mule deer, great animal with great eyesight. Coyotes, great eyesight, better smell. Ducks, they could be 40 eyeballs at you at one time, right? And, and the way that their eyes are on their head, they can see at different angles. And the other part of ducks is that they are conditioned on their flight patterns to not go where their boogeyman is. So their eyes are looking for birds of prey and they are looking for things in the bushes that are going to come and attack them or ruin their day. That's why ducks, in my opinion, Tyler Jordan, go into flooded timber. There are acorns in there, but I think that the safety yeah. and the security of the flooded timber where eagles can't get to them when they're out on a flooded rice field in Stuttgart, Arkansas, they go in those trees where no eagle's going to dive down and get them. Or no coyote's going to be able to run through those trees and they'll hear the splashing of the water. They'll be gone and lifted up out of there. So... I think that if you can go into an environment in Realtree Max 4 back in the early 2000s, Realtree Max 5 in 2010 and later, and then now Timber, I think that if you take the analogy of what we just talked about, the harvestable ethical shots, I feel that even if you are in a pit blind or if you are in a, let's take a blind that you've hunted at Honey Break, their blinds are amazing, right? If you don't hide your face with a, with a Realtree tree face mask or the real tree hat on the top or your gun is not covered in the right material or dipping. I'm not saying that you're not going to kill them once in a while, but day sure. after day as those ducks mature and they get a little bit more weary and they get a little bit more savvy and intelligent, real tree has developed this mindset and culture of we are going to hide in their home. And that's what you have to keep in mind with camouflage and concealment and the essentials of duck hunting is you are literally trying to go where they were yesterday. You might go call a coyote. A coyote might not have been in that country in a year. You just know that it's, it's got probability because of what it looks like. Ducks, you scouted. They were there yesterday. I don't scout coyotes. I mean, I go to areas I've yeah. seen coyotes once in a while, but ducks, I go, they're there. They were here yesterday. They're coming back here and they're, they're looking for something to fade, make them go away. It's our job to make them feel comfortable enough to come where they already want to be. As opposed to a coyote, you're calling him out of anywhere to come eat something. He's coming there to eat. Ducks are coming in there going, wow, that hen sounds sexy. I'm hungry. It's in the trees. There's a big raft of ducks down there. It sounds real. There's ripples on the water. I don't see any boogeyman. And the number one thing that's going to deter your success in duck hunting, and I'll let you talk after this. I got long winded. I apologize is, <laughs> is hunters taking it for granted that the wild animal does not know what they're doing. That they know that that they got them tricked already. They're the best caller in the world. They got the most anatomically correct, best decoys in the world. They got the most scientifically researched guns and ammo. And deer hunters are in tree stands that are welded and fabricated, and we're up above them. And deer don't have any natural predator from the sky. But still, you can mess up a tree stand hunt if you're not hidden the right way, and you and you expose yourself. Ducks are always bending their necks looking for the boogeyman. So are geese. This this podcast is the essentials of duck hunting, and I wasn't going to do it without you. You in real tree because I think that your game is up 100% if you get the analogy in your head that you are in their home and if you're in somebody's home and you're trying to trick them you don't want to be seen yeah no I, I think I think you're exactly right and uh you know something that that I've noticed in just my short at short time duck hunting it's not something I've done for a long time probably the last four or five years obviously was out there at honey break one of your favorite places to go this year quite a bit and just going out there you know i've seen it where ducks have some of the sharpest eyes you know of all game animals and uh, they can see your equipment 
way before you get in, they get into range. And that, that's everything. You know, when people, I, I, I was out there this year and uh, you just kind of notice it. Obviously, Drew is, you know, sometimes polite, doesn't say anything. <laughs> but when somebody has a, a shiny gun or, you know, they're wearing a, a digital pattern that, that glows, when those ducks fly overhead and he's calling to them and you can see those ducks bend their neck and look down, it flared a lot of ducks. I, I mean, I saw it and, and Drew said, man, I'm telling you, and he would give sometimes people crap for what they were wearing. I won't name anybody specifically, um, you know, brand wise, but not saying that, you know, real trees, the end all be all either, but, uh, you know, you, you definitely you are up against a big challenge when you have ducks, not only come in, you know, head, you know, you know, right in front of you or behind you, but they're, they're looking down on top of you. And whenever you have, um, especially like pothole type, marshes where you know cattails and other grasses uh get matted you know it, sometimes it creates really large voids and ducks they see that they see everything so you want to make sure you have something that you're going to feel confident in the entire season and i felt like that's something dad's done a good job is that he he tests his patterns over and over and he asked for expert advice i mean you were part of the process of you know developing real tree timber when it, before we you know came out with it I think a year and a half before we released it, I think you saw it. Is that right? Oh yeah. So, I mean, you know, he, he, he wants to make sure he has everybody's input, you know, from guides to our pro staff. And, um, you know, I, that's something that that pattern does a, a really good job of, of is timber specifically having those large cutouts, especially at the long distance, those ducks that break up is something that we, that you really don't see in any other pattern. And, um, you know, I, I think that's what, you know, that's why Drew said he was so drawn to it. It's just, it really breaks up your distance, you know, from a long ways all the way until you can bring a duck in and uh, it fools them to bring them in close. And if you think, you know, you know, Drew, he's a go-getter. I love Drew. And he hunts in a lot, he hunts in, in, in the same general vicinity, you know, every day to where you could get conditioned to the mindset. Well, I don't really need to wear camouflage or I don't need my clients wearing camouflage because our blinds are so well maintained and built. And he's got the exact opposite opinion. He's like, no, our success rate's gone up tenfold. And on top of that, if you go and you talk to my buddy, Joel in Arkansas for years, Joel would wear, and you know what, you know what wax, wax canvas is mm -hmm. and just oil cloth and all that, that, that dark Brown, that's yep. what they would wear in the trees. And that's what yeah. a lot of old school timber hunters would wear. And then when this pattern comes out, they start to wear a more technologically advanced jacket that Banded makes. And you, you work with other manufacturers. Obviously, we push Banded, but Banded comes out with, you know, windproof and waterproof and comfort levels and pockets here. And it's really orientated for a timber hunter. And then he's like, this is the perfect camouflage for trees and they take off that, that canvas. And then the other part of that story is that two years or year and a half before timbers introduced to the market, I'm real tree. So I'm going into the woods wearing max five. And then I have the guys in the woods that hunt the woods every day where I hunt them 15 days a year. They're hunting the woods every, every day. And they look at me and go, your camouflage is too light. Get it off. And that's telling you the, the, the manufacturer, the designer, your dad, Bill, that, Max five is not meant for flooded timber duck hunting. You're going to yeah. have days where you can kill them with max five. Don't get me wrong. But when you're going every day and those ducks start getting conditioned and there, there's a lot of duck hunters in Arkansas, man, they kill more mallards in a 60 day season than any other state in the country in 60 days in California is open 107 days and Arkansas still kills more mallards than we do. So my point is, is that that's how many guys are chasing them. There's got to be a lot of guys chasing them to kill that many in 60 days, right? So yeah. those ducks are getting conditioned, Tyler Jordan. So when I hear somebody like Joel say that, I'm like, well, that makes sense because we're not worried about the ones that we kill on opening day because we, we're going to be hunting 60 days from now and we want to still be getting them, right? And that's, yeah. that's the evolution of camouflage is getting those guys to think that way that you can now take a camouflage pattern and not have a big weighted down jacket that's brown like a dark tree bark is. Now you have this thing right here. I, yeah. I, wor I work out in this thing. I wash it. I work out and yeah. again, I hunt in it. Then I put a vest over it. If it gets a little colder, then I'd layer another thing on top of that. If it gets a little colder, we're living in the golden age of technologically advanced clothing and apparel mixed with the best looking camouflage patterns in real trees history. In my opinion, the edge, not to say that original and all that didn't do its job, but you can say, you can tell me if I'm wrong and we can take this part out of the podcast, but we did a long integrated ingrained 
photo shoot for Real Tree Timber, I mean Real Tree Original, together in Arkansas. And we spent a lot of time those three days working our butts off on photos and videos and all that. And then what happened? Your dad's like, I don't want it. It's not good enough. And he's like, I'm going to come out with this. Is that wrong? No, 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 no. You're right. You can leave this in. No, I, that's, that's, I was actually about to bring that up next. You know, uh, you know, for Real Tree Original, there are a lot of fans of the original pattern, obviously, because it's, you know, the first pattern that, uh, you know, dad ever came out with. And, you know, back in 2016, we had our 30 year anniversary and, you know, we made some, some hats. That was the first hats we had had in years with that pattern, you know? So that pattern for dad to give everybody a little history, when he came out with that pattern, it was there in the market for about six months. And the pattern really didn't sell that well. And the reason why, as you can tell this, even in the photos that we had too, it, it kind of, it had a little bit of a, a glare to it. And it, was, it looked very gray. You know, sometimes when you would get in the woods with it, which, you know, some of the pictures uh, showed us in, in the woods, it was, it was blue. But dad knew this even before we went out there and shot those photos. Dad knew that the pattern was not going to work. He was already working on something a little bit different with the, with the timber pattern. But, uh, you know, original is still my favorite just because of the history. You know, it kind of shows us from, you know, where we started from where we are now with Realtree Timber, Edge, uh, you know, Escape, all these other patterns. But, yeah, as far as an effectiveness pattern, though, when you put the two side by side, timber and original, they really just don't compare. You know, and, and that's something dad's not going to put something out in the marketplace. He's a stickler, man. He is, he tests over and over and over again. It doesn't matter what pattern it, it is. Real tree edge took dad three years of testing in different environments. And obviously, you know, trying to find a pattern like edge, not to get off on, you know, deer hunting, but for edge, it's, you have to have something a lot more, it's not going to be as versatile you know, in different parts of the country, it's only going to match certain, you know, terrain where, you know, duck hunting, it's a lot of the similar, uh, you know, type place that you go to. So that's why max five and timber work so well, but, you know, he, he does a lot of testing, ask a lot of questions, gets input from our pro staff like yourself. I remember I was so excited to show you the pattern because I know you're one of those people that's going to be honest with us. You know, you're, you're going to tell us right away if this works or not. And, uh, you know, you were, you were pumped, you know, when, when you first saw it and that, you know, it, it makes me feel good because I know how much time and effort dad puts in to, right. to making sure he has the best product out there, you know, for hunters to make sure that they're going to feel confident when they go in the woods, I know they're going to disappear. And that's something that original just didn't, it, it never had. And, you know, I think we tried to, I think from nostalgia, we tried to bring it out and and do something with it because people were begging for it man they want to see something original so we took it more the lifestyle route instead of making actual hunting garments now some people still you know may want to deer hunt in a hoodie or something or if they're sitting in a, a ground blind or just going to the tree stand for the afternoon um you know i totally understand that but you know dad is effectiveness first that's just what he believes and uh I, so timber was was kind of a must in his eyes I just think that there's a different mindset and I think your dad thinks the same exact way as the mindset I'm thinking about with the effectiveness statement is key is like I talk about when I do speaking engagements or seminars on duck hunting, I always talk about this blank canvas and you're the artist and you're throwing all these paints and oils at it and you're creating a masterpiece. So you got to ask yourself as a hunter and a, and a gather a, a provider, a, 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 a naturalist is how effective do you want to be consistently? And if you have the mindset that you can go out and archery hunt big deer in blue jeans and a sweatshirt, you're not going to be effective consistently. You're going to have to deal with elements. You're going to have to, you're going to get to the point to where you're going to start getting picked apart. In my opinion, the effectiveness comes in, in the application and the approach of that hunt of how do you feel as a hunter? How does your garment and your pattern make you feel when you put it on and start that voyage and that process of getting into your tree stand or your boat to go to your duck blind or walking into the turkey woods. Are you comfortable? Are you dry? Is the wind hitting you? Is, is it waterproof? Are you, are you, do you feel good? You know, baseball players, when I talk to baseball players at spring training, I'm like, why, why are you wearing, why are you wearing this garment under you? I go, that doesn't make sense to me. You know what they tell me nine times out of 10, because it makes me feel right. 
And if that's everything to their performance, it might not be the most practical thing to wear a compression fit shirt at this time on a 90 degree day. But the guy will say, it makes me feel right. And if I feel right, that makes me think I'm going to perform right. And it's all about the effectiveness. That's how they get the contracts that they get, right? So yeah. th the effectiveness of me is when I have a Benelli in my hand with this garment on or a heavier one if it's colder and this hat on and I feel like I'm the best I can be at that point, my performance goes up tenfold to where I look in the sky and I'm cutting them better than I do. I sound better than I do. My dog's going to perform better than, than he usually does. My, we're going to experience the best hunt. We're going to have a blast. We're going to be high fiving. we're going to have camaraderie. Dinner's going to taste better that night. That fire is going to feel better that night. That song around the campfire is going to feel sound better that night. And that's the way that I think. So when Bill Jordan is sitting there going, it's all about the effectiveness. Yes you are effective as a hunter in so many different ways. It's up to you to throw those oils at that canvas and paint it. And I think that everything is with camouflage. Camouflage is not only cool, but it's effective used the right way and not having the mentality that, oh yeah, dude, nothing's changed. Nothing has evolved. We used to kill ducks over, over tires. We'll go out and try to kill them over tires today. They ain't going to come, man. That we've, we've, yeah. we've, we've wired a, uh, a smarter duck. We sound different. We look different. We're hiding better. We're getting into more unaccessible places that there were 20 years ago. We're going to Canada more these days, which that didn't happen in the 80s and the early 90s as much as Americans go up there now. We're hunting these ducks from the very beginning of their migratory route when they leave the breeding grounds all the way down to southern Louisiana and into the Gulf of Mexico. So you can't yeah. tell me that we're not dealing with smart animals. We are dealing with a smarter creature, in my opinion. And that's why effectiveness, in the Bill Jordan term to put it, effectiveness, is key. You can't argue that. You cannot argue something that gets animals as close as we get them. Not just we as in we, I'm talking about you and the Waddells. I've seen so much done over real tree camo that would make you go, did you just see that? You gotta be kidding me. I, I, I wish, I wish that people accepted predator hunting more because I could show you predator hunting videos of coyotes at a foot that literally are the best hunt, the most adaptable hunters in the world, they say. And I mean, charging us at a foot away, running into us and getting killed to where I didn't feel comfortable putting it on TV because it was so up close. So I used my discretion of saying, that's not, I'm not going to do it. Whether or not it would have been taken or handled the right way, I don't know. But I, if you could see the effectiveness of real tree camel patterns out here with the Max 1 and the stuff that we've worn, Camouflage is king. And to be to have the real tree effectiveness not only in the deer woods, not only in the western country for mule deer or elk, not only in the duck blind when you're in a cornfield or the or the flooded willows in Max 5, now you have the best tree pattern ever done. That is the difference in wanting to be effective or just settling for, ah, it was an all right hunt. I killed him and he's on my tailgate and his tongue's hanging out. Or here's my pile of ducks. What did you really get out of the hunt and how effective are you going to be tomorrow now that you just had that experience today? That's how yeah. I approach every hunt. Yeah. Everybody wants to feel like they disappear. I want to feel like I disappear. I want to feel like I'm just a fly on the wall, whether yeah. it's deer hunting, turkey hunting, duck hunting. And you know, you kind of feel like when you have an effective camo pattern on, uh, you know, with everything else going right, like you said, if you, if you feel good, um, you know, that's, that's when, you know, you feel like you're at your best and have the best opportunity. And, you know, that's something dad's always stressed is, you know, I, I, and I'm not going to knock any other, you know, camo brands or anybody that comes out with other patterns, but, you know, something that, uh, you know, dad's always said when, when companies try to say, well, this, oh, this, you know, digital look will kind of give you a, you know, it, you know, it tricks a deer's eyes or a duck's eyes. It's like, why would you not want to have something that kind of mimics the environment that you're in? You know, that, 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 well, to if me you're asking like me, I mean, brand. if you're asking me, I could, I could talk on that for five days. I mean, it's no, it's no question. It's not even a, an argument to me. It never has been. I've never even understood it. And I think I, I have the utmost respect and love and admiration for our military. And I think yeah. a lot of military, um, of, of, approach went into that like a sniper hiding um i i would think that a lot of the times when a sniper is in position and i don't i'm not trying to speak like i know what goes on in battle i would think that you probably carry a net with you that 3d netting to throw around you around the area to cover you up and break you up more with the 3d effect of looking more like vegetation or a big ball of moss or a rock pile or something i don't know that for sure i've just have never bought into it 
I never will. I don't, I'm just like you. I don't argue it. I don't, I don't chastise them for it. It's to each their own, but I will, I will never, ever buy into it. Never have, never would. Now I know people that have, and I don't sit there and say, you're, you're so off your rocker. I just know that I've been in the woods enough where the woods, the hills, the marshes, and we don't hunt like 99% of the world do. You don't and I don't. And the main reason is, is because we have a camera crew with us. And that camera crew is there to document and make the people watching it live through what we're doing vicariously. That's what you do with your turkey hunting right now is you're giving people an outlet to live through because you live in a spot that you could walk out your back door and enjoy a turkey hunt with your dad and your family and document it for us to enjoy it and still live through your uh, through your hunts. And that's what it, you're doing. And I have watched it in the last, and I've been filming hunts with Fred Zink, Ducks Unlimited, all of that since the year 2001. Not as long as most people that are in the game, but longer than some. And I have seen animal after, an- and I've been with Realtree, so everybody knows I've been with Realtree since Max 4 came out, which was mm-hmm. 2000. Two, maybe 2000. I don't even know. 2000. Yeah, I, think two, I think it was 2003. Three, somewhere in there. I was one of the first four. It was Barney Califf, Jeff Foyle, Sean Stahl, and Chad Belding. I remember yeah, getting better. the phone call and being on the Max. I remember getting the big shield stickers with Max 4 on it. I remember the first garments we got, everything. So th- this isn't just me going, well, it's real trees good today. I've never worn another camouflage since I started filming hunts. Never have. Now, back in the day when I was just coming up and hunting and I had a, a MO shirt or I had this shirt or whatever i i I, everybody knows they can go find it anywhere that i wore different camo phil robertson wore different camo one time people did but where do they end up with the best that's where we end up and i've been with thrill tree since the very first day of max four and watched the involvement of the max one and the edge and and the timber and the max five there's one i'm missing i'm missing one Uh, timber max five i'm missing one there was one more in there that I'm missing, I thought, since 2004. But anyway, I'm not trying to say that, that you know, I just woke up. I'm trying to prove I didn't just wake up and say, oh, I'm just going to go with Realtree because they asked me to. I've been diehard Realtree for a lot of years. The Avery years, Tyler, the Tom Matthews days, the days when when the, the Bass Pro stuff happened, right? I mean, I've yeah. been there for a long time, and I've watched many a camera crews dig in and get ready for a hunt. And I'm talking from from mule deer to antelope to predators, which are the, are the keenest of animals in my opinion. And then ducks and geese and turkeys. And I have watched us trick animal after animal after animal consistently. So I can't argue the power of the non-digital camouflage that we choose to wear, which is real tree. I could never, ever not hunt in it, which is, that's a bold statement. That's a bold statement because I could go out tomorrow and probably get and, and have a successful hunt in another camouflage pattern. It just goes back to the effectiveness in the way that real tree makes me feel through my confidence to throw my paints at that canvas and create this hunt that I look back on and go, I'll leave my legacy on that hunt. Us as a crew, we're going to leave our legacy on this pea field today in Saskatchewan, this corn field in North Dakota, this river of the Yellowstone River in Billings, Montana. We just left our mark there because we visioned it. We we visualized it. We were effective because of our of our whole approach and our platform and our belief in camouflage and concealment and scouting and the essentials of duck hunting, the calling, the gun, the ammo, the dog, the knife, the, the bounty, the, the butchering, the processing, everything that goes into this lifestyle that you and I get to live and humbles us every day day that's why i feel that what your dad has done since 86 has given people that magic in so many different forms that's why camouflage is an essential and it's not about well you could wear this and you could kill them you could in in a sunny day in the woods probably be naked out there and kill ducks if they're really wanting to be in there and you have a, a good sounding call you probably can but the effectiveness of the next day and the day after that is where your camouflage plays the role and the way that it makes you feel day in and day out. That's, that's just, it's one way to look at it because what else do I have? I'm a duck hunter. I, I, I I find sanity in the smallest things of like, when I step out of my boat, that first step in the mud, if I'm in the right wader in the right pattern with the right foothold in the right grip on my gun and my dog's got the right look in his eyes, I'm a winner, man. We win chip. We're going to win chip. All right, Ricky Bobby, we're going to win because <laughs> we feel good. The, that, that's all that it, it, we, we're, we're going to win today because we are ready for this hunt. 
We've studied the power camouflage. That's, I think what, what the, the camouflage brand of Realtree has done has absolutely created magic for millions of thousands of people, millions of times throughout the, the, the 1986. How long has it been? It's been what? 30, 30, Since 86. 34 almost, years. Yeah. Yeah. 34 years. So yeah, which think, I think, think about how many memories have been created through Realtree in those 34 years. It's crazy. And you know, it, it really is crazy. And you know, dad, uh, you know, obviously he's been the the brains behind every pattern and really pushes himself, you know, coming out with different patterns. And like, you know, when, when it comes to edge, obviously we, we kind of change those patterns up even more. And when people, we do make a change, people ask, why, why are we making a change? You know, you've had four or five years with success with this pattern. It's done extremely well. It matches where I'm at. Dad always feels like, and this is where camouflage, people say it's not innovative. You know, you're just throwing a bunch of sticks and limbs together. I can just tell you from watching the process and everything that we go through on testing, asking pro staff, asking guides, if this works, that's not the case. Dad pushes himself, you know, every, every pattern to try to make it better. You know, he's not going to release something unless he feels a hundred percent. He may get close to feeling 90% on a certain pattern, but then he may back off of it to where he doesn't like a section of it and take it out and then go retest it again, take it somewhere else in the country. And, and until he until he's a hundred percent sure, until he's gotten the right you know advice from you know pro staff like yourself and other people that he trusts, um, you know that it absolutely works in the you know in every environment. Uh, so that's you know I, I I just feel like we've had you know thirty five years of of proving that you know to the to the outdoorsman and you know and, and continuing to do so and you know we're, we're innovating patterns every single day. You know people ask uh, every funny. day. Yeah. Are you, yeah. Every, every day. How, how every awesome day. is that, that you get to do that every day? That is just yeah. so cool. Yeah. I don't think people think that too, because I, I remember someone asked dad and, uh, they asked him, um, they asked him, this has been a couple of years ago. He did a store appearance and they said, so Bill, you know, what do you do? Um, uh, you know, during the off season when it's not deer season, like, what do you do? Do you just, you just hang out and get ready for next deer season? It's like, no, man, we're, we're, we're constantly, we're innovating over here. We have, you know, two or three different patterns at a time working. Some of those patterns are, you know, working two or three years in advance. You know, I can tell you we're working on a pattern right now that I, I had a big involvement in something I think you're going to like, I can't really talk about it a whole lot. I know, you know, a little bit about it, but um, you know, something dad and I are kind of tweaking and working on right now that I think, you know, the waterfowl market is really going to enjoy when they see it. Um, but, you know, we're not quite ready yet. We were going to come out with it. Uh, for 21, probably going to be a, a 22 push, just given everything going on with the coronavirus right now. And manufacturing is obviously very backed up. Um, so we're kind of behind on that front. But, you know, when we when we have it ready, we're going to have all our ducks in a row. And it's it's been kind of fun for me. This is really the first pattern myself, other than maybe timber, to where I've really been with my dad from start to finish on it. Um, you know, just kind of seeing how he thinks. And I, I love that too, because i I'm, I'm always love going to, you know, different places and, and seeing what works and what doesn't, uh, in different environments. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're constantly, you know, trying to make it happen. You know, dad's still, you know, working every day to try to keep the hunter hidden and make him feel confident. And that's why I wanted to get you on here, man. I appreciate it. I think that, uh, the only way to, to, you know, test it even more is to get together at duck camp and yeah. invite a good musician. Yeah. Um, have have the right cook there figure out that and then i i gotta get down there on a turkey hunt one of these years if uh, you know i threatened to come this year before the virus but i, I gotta get with you and cole pepper and waddell i just gotta see it done right i just gotta be a part of it um you know and, you, and i'm gonna I, I won't do any calling i'll just sit there and, and pull the trigger if they come in <laughs> how many turkeys have you shot in my life yeah 30 Even 30 to 30. 40 okay so okay you, you come with us sometime Oh, I want to. I know. We, I know we talked about doing it, but man, I, I, this year would have been awesome because it, it was it was rocking those first two or three weeks. But next year, plan on it. We can go with uh, you know, Michael's just right down the road from us. But our, you know, stay at the farm next year, and we'll try to get on some. We got a lot of turkeys this year. We've had a lot of good hatches here the last three or four years. So, 
Yeah, next week we have Michael coming on to give us a turkey report. We have a Nick, we got Nick Monk coming on to give us an application and his house report. We got T Bone coming on to talk about what T Bone does, and and yeah, I just love I love that dude. And uh, who else? Who else? Real tree we got coming up pretty soon. I've I've reached out to Nate Hosey. He's getting back to me. Bird songs coming on. Um, I thought I had one more coming on. You know, I did. I had Justin Martin on the other day, and it was awesome. He was awesome. And I got to talk with uh, Stetson the other day, the Real Tree Fishing, which we, you and him and I are getting on another podcast coming up yep. to talk yep. about the culture of Real Tree and the fishing market. Tyler Jordan, Real Tree Outdoors. He just got me fired up. I, I, you know, they keep teasing me with this new pattern, and I might just get on a plane and fly down there and infiltrate. I'll hide in timber have, around have the you, office. Have you seen a piece of it yet? No. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna show. It. I'll show it to you off here, obviously. But I, I actually, I got, I got, I got it here in my room. Actually, just a, just a pe- You know, it's not 100 percent done, but I do have some of it here. So I'll give you a sneak peek. Well, of I'll it. hit stop record on this. That's another episode <laughs> of the Foul Life Podcast. Tyler Jordan, thank you so much for being here, brother. Thank you, Chad. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. The essentials of duck hunting. We're going to keep them coming at you again. Today's episode of the Foul Life Podcast was brought to you by our friends at Realtree Outdoors. Friends, family in the outdoors, Bill Jordan, Tyler Jordan, the entire crew, you name it, they've been wearing Realtree. I promise you, just check out the history of hunting since 1986. We abide by it. Never will wear another camouflage pattern. For more information on the Foul Life, check out thefowllife.com. You can find us on Instagram at TV. You can find Realtree on Instagram at Realtree Outdoors. Follow their page. They got a lot of awesome stuff going on with Spring Thunder right now. We'll be back at you soon with another episode of The Foul Life. Please continue to support the partners and sponsors that support us. Tom, hit that button. This song is called My Foul Life by 2AM Logic. <laughs>